this is the guts of a fairly uh, typical design low end a uh, travel power branded says by Roadmaster but most likely made in I don't know, Pufung Dung State Electric Factory or some other crap like that because it's again Chinese. Overall, it's fairly typical for the design of a low end consumer grade inverter. And principally, this video is just in some of the. Because um, uh, I've never done a Gets video of one on Splendor Small before. Overall, it's what you'd expect to find inside one is a transformer for the uh, switching power supply one of the two uh, transformer drive MOSFETs and the other one because the way these things are um, driven which I'll probably put in a little video segment here as you get your typical uh, very simplified inverter schematic you've got your main power transformer which is a little tiny one that was visible on the board. Then you've got the two switching elements, and this has got BJPs because you can remember the uh, MOSFET symbols uh, offhand. But those would go to a uh, some kind of a driver circuit or a driver chip or something. And the way that this would work is that each of these devices would fire in turn with a bit of, uh, of a delay to prevent crossover losses. And um, what that does is that generates a square, a, a modified square wave on the secondary of the transformer, which is then rectified by the um, our grade sprigs. Those are the uh, little ECI 204s. And then that is a ripple suppression capacitor and the H sprig, which then connects to the low voltage. That would go to some kind of an H sprig driver circuit. And of course, there'd be loads of things like uh, uh, over potential, under potential, all kinds of protection circuitry, but this is just pretty much what they are without all the other extraneous stuff, or extraneous stuff glommed on. But anyway, then there's a uh, great bridge made up of uh, some HER204 uh, high speed rectifiers, which again you need because the output of the switching supply is about uh, probably in the range of like 40,000 cycles per second or something and ordinary uh, silicon power rectifiers like the um, uh, 1 in 4,000 series, 1 in 5,400 series, P600 series, etc. Um, due to the characteristics of those particular types of rectifiers which involve a whole bunch of booga booga physics that I'm not going to go into because it's beyond the scope of this video they are maxed out at about a few hundred cycles per second. Above that, the it takes um, uh, sufficient time for the uh, or it uh, takes so much time for the charge carriers to move around relative to the um, period of the AC that they're rectifying that uh, there's a great deal of wasted heat in the devices and they can actually cook. Not only that, but you wouldn't be getting all that much out. Because again, they'd be spending so much time moving around charge carriers just to put a really, really, really simplify it. Then there's um, <coughs> some uh, four uh, Super 220 package MOSFET. They're um, CEPF 640s, all of them. Those are the output H bridge that I'll put the, uh, those are what actually create the modified square wave from the 140 volts or so that the switch power supply produces. And then that's just fed to the two uh, little output contacts that are just, um, make up the receptacle inside the device because th those just line up with a pair of uh, slots in the case. That uh, third contact there, that's just the ground which is tied over to the, uh, uh, DC in uh, neutral. And it's actually something you don't often see in cheap inverters like this where they actually have a ground because things like this power to go one right here that as you can see in the receptacles in it because I haven't gotten around to building the proper case for it yet. We haven't had the time. But 
or anyone else you can take it those uh, the receptacles do not have uh, uh, ground connections in them and they don't even have the terminals installed in them because uh, I've seen some inverters where it's just your standard panel mount uh, NEMA 515 receptacle where they just connected up the uh, AC side wiring for the hot manucal but w but left the ground lug unconnected so your loose group could could uh, wire up the ground lug to the um, supply input but these don't even do that so, but yeah, yeah that's common in Chinese crap But anyways, and then uh, you can see that's the uh, off-brand Zhong Tai Master. That's the uh, cap that's wired in um, parallel with the DC side input, and there's this uh, RXL or HXL, this weird booga booga flop that I can't decipher, which is saying something. Little Ong Huai some generic little Chinese one-inch fan that's molded into the uh, PCB actually you can see it's got these little pegs on it that are just molded over at the factory with little uh, ultrasonic tools I have to fit into a hole there ordinarily that draws air uh, through the uh, case through these holes in one of the heat sinks which are just little bits of sheet aluminum yeah this particular one is held in with a two little alignment stubs that are then keened over with another ultrasonic tool at the factory. Uh, there's one for the other mo uh, switching MOSFET for the uh, switching supply, and that's just loose, and it's got the registration marks, but they're too short to be peened over, so it's just loose in the case, and the only thing holding it in is the um, pressure from the uh, uh, MOSFET. Then there's... Um, for the uh, DC out, because it's also, or for the 5 volts out, because it's also a little USB receptacle built in that's only good for power, because you can see that the um, data lines are not connected to anything. Because again, it's, you can see there, they're not even soldered. Because again, it's just simple two layer printing circuit board, although they did use FR4 material, so that so there's at least that much going for it. Not the um, paper laminate crap. It's not, but anyway. And for that, there's just a little 7805 potential regulator. Just that's just crap that's stuck to the uh, thing. I'm going to clean that off before we assemble it. But judge your fairly typical uh, a solution for supplying the five volts out for the. Um, for the uh, D for the receptacle for the uh, USB receptacle, though you'd expect them to use some kind of uh, something like a, a three eight zero uh, no 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 sorry an MC three four zero six three uh, or M two five seven six or some kind of a switching device because this way you're wasting upwards of uh, half the power going into it just being turned into heat and not only that but it's got the small heat sink in a bunch. So, again, it wouldn't be eroding that too heavily. And, of course, also that, the only thing that that regulator is supplying is the, um, is the USB receptacle. So, obviously, the control logic for this, I don't see any other obvious potential regulation. So, most likely, all the controls that they have is all 12-volt. Because I haven't dug any super into the thing yet. I only just opened it up for the video. I've opened it up before, but not to this extent. Uh, then there's a little thermistor for over temperature protection. Then there's this little uh, SOIC 16 device. It's a um, KA7500BS. And then the bottom line is YB739T1. Okay, that's probably week 39, uh, week 39 of 2007. That's that little uh, SO, IC16 device, and this little SOIC8 is, I almost 
can talk about it as well. I'll put that in, I'll put what that is in an annotation. But on the schematic it's <clears throat> on the board it's marked U two. And then that's pretty much it. Just your standard uh consumer grade electronics uh inverter. Although one thing that I had to do to this in order to make it work is because that I got it for I have for only like a couple bucks up at BT Surplus, is it didn't come with the stock wiring harness that these things normally come with. Because ordinarily there's a, there'd be another one of these receptacles mounted over here, except the one that I took out had two of those little notches on top. This one only has that little one. Although they're electrically wired in parallel and have identical pinouts, so it's really only just for purposes of messing with the end user. But what I had to do was, uh, Ordinarily, there'd be the uh, a little stock wiring harness that this comes with, one of which would have a little, which would have matching connectors for both of the two uh, connectors. One of which had a little um, standard surface mount uh, uh, cigarette lighter receptacle at the end of a couple inches of cord. The other one had a little um, uh, cigarette lighter a plug on the end of a couple feet of cord. But this, I just had to solder in this. Um, 16 gauge uh, zip cord because I didn't have any of that. So, and now to see if this thing will work. And here you can see the thing's working. Just got uh, running a little uh, nice Phillips LED lamp that I had lying around as uh, stairs. See the little, also little green idiot light on the back of the P of the uh, printed circuit board that would ordin ordinarily shine through that little lens right there. Little um white dot next to it is a red LED that lights if there's a fault condition. So yeah, you can see that the thing works. And also I don't know if the fan's probably being just blocked by uh, something. I don't, don't want to fiddle with it because there's lethal potentials on that board. But you know, see that it works. 